We get calls all the time from people looking to buy Airbnbs and invest in short-term rental properties around Montana. In this video, we're going to talk to you about all the things you need to keep in mind if that's your plan and you're looking to buy a short-term rental property. The first thing you need to know is you can't just buy any old house or any old condo anywhere in Northwest Montana or in Montana in general and go ahead and start an Airbnb. Uh, it used to be that way back in the day, but now all of the towns and counties and everybody's gotten in on the game and you can't just buy a house and rent it out without going through the proper steps. So let's take a look at what's needed. First of all, a lot of towns have actual areas in the town that you can do short-term rentals. Like in Whitefish, there's a map right here I'll show you that there's only certain neighborhoods in the town that it's allowed. Uh, if you're thinking you're just gonna go out in the county outside of one of the towns and do it, they've also set up rules that you have to follow and different type of zonings where it's allowed and not allowed. So just because you go outside of town doesn't mean you can do it either. The other thing, even if you're in an area like out in the county that says you can do it, if you're in a subdivision, you need to check the covenants because it may not be allowed in that particular neighborhood. And so again, another thing you gotta check before you buy a place to definitely make sure you can do short-term rentals at that property. The other thing I see a lot of times is people just think, oh, I'm going to buy a short-term rental and automatically make money. Well, I can't stress enough, you really need to do a business plan or make a business plan and do your homework and make sure that even though you can rent it out for short-term rentals, that you're actually going to make money on it. So look at this calendar right here. I pulled this up off of Airbnb and this is a place right in downtown Whitefish and it shows when it's rented out. Well as you can see from now until the middle of June, almost the end of June, it's wide open. So basically during that time frame you're making zero dollars. And the thing that a lot of people don't think about, even though it's sitting there and nobody's renting it, you're still paying for electricity and gas and any other utilities. And you probably want somebody, especially in the wintertime, to check on it every week or two to make sure that, you know, their, a toilet isn't running or a pipe hasn't broken or that the utilities are still on. So make sure you take that into account as an another added expense that you're going to have for one of these properties when it's not rented out. So the calendar I just showed you tells you that even if you're buying a place right in downtown Whitefish in one of the most popular towns in all of Montana, it's probably not going to be rented out year round. There are slow times even in downtown Whitefish where your place is just going to be sitting there. So keep that in mind that it's not a guarantee income every night or every weekend uh, during some parts of the year. The other thing you need to take into consideration is the competition in the area. So if you find a place and you really like it and it's in an area that you can do Airbnb, because these areas are so limited now as to where you can do it, you should really check out the competition. Let's take a look at some of the competition right here in Northwest Montana. So here we are on the Airbnb site, and let's take a look around at how many places are currently available. So we'll start in Kalispell, and it doesn't look too bad until you kind of zoom in a little bit, and then you see there's tons more. You're up against quite a few other people that are, that are renting out their properties, and you can see as the closer you get, the more, the more that show up. And then if you head up towards Whitefish here on Airbnb, you kind of have the same thing. It doesn't look bad until you start zooming in and you see all of, the, all of the available places right now that you'll be up against. And we'll head over to VRBO. It's kind of the same thing. Here's Kalispell. They don't put the prices on the little tags like Airbnb does, but you can see the amount of places that are available. And then if you head north up the valley here, up to Whitefish, kind of the same thing. Once it loads here, you'll see you zoom in on downtown and uh, 
you're going to be up against quite a few quite a few people doing it. I'm sure there's some overlap with these two sites. Uh, people will list their places on both sites. Just take a look. If you're looking in a certain area, make sure you do this as part of your you know research before you buy and see how many places you're up against when you when you actually purchase this place and plan on getting a bunch of rentals out of it because if you buy right in the middle of here you know obviously in the big prime times fourth of july weekend the middle of summer all of these will be booked up for the most part or the big music festival they have here you're going to be booked up but the the thing you want to look at is when it's say this time of year early spring uh, where there's not a lot of people in town, if you're up against this many other places, how are you going to compete? Are you going to lower your price way below everyone else? Or are you going <laughs> to do some sort of different type of marketing? And the other thing to think about too is there are other websites besides Airbnb and VRBO that do this. I know there's sites for waterfront type properties. So there's many other places that people can use to rent out their property. So just keep this in mind when you're looking at a place to buy and make sure you know what you're up against as far as competition in that particular area. The other thing you want to think about as well is the prices that each company charges you. So VRBO says they basically charge, a, if you do pay per booking, they charge you 8% of the fees. So 8% of the money coming in is going to go to VRBO or it looks like they have a uh, yearly uh, fee that you can pay, a subscription that you could pay for the year. And as far as Airbnb goes, kind of theirs is a little more compl complex. It looks like on their page here, it says if you're a host, most hosts pay a 3% fee. But again, there's all kinds of different setups for these guys. The guest fees can be under 14%. So all these things are going to come into play if you're looking to uh, you know, rent out your place. And the other thing that doesn't include that we'll talk about in a little bit is the fees you're going to pay for someone to actually manage it for you. Okay, so now you've found a property that allows short-term rentals, you like it, you want to buy it. So another thing you're going to have to do before you actually start renting it out is follow the rules for the different towns or the county that you're doing this Airbnb or short-term rental property in. There's a process you have to go through before it's legal to rent it out. And I've looked up some of the applications from some of the areas around here. Let's take a look at those. So here's some of the applications I looked up around our valley here. We'll start in Columbia Falls and you have to go through this whole checklist and it tells you everything you need to do. You have to have, make sure it has egress windows. Uh, a fire marshal has to come out and check it. You need to get a state of Montana, basically hotel license. You have to get uh, the health department to inspect the place. So it goes through everything that they require and you know you can't have any signs you have to have a if it's located in the city you have to have a columbia falls business license so there's a lot to, to go through even if you find an area that does allow these short-term rentals here's the whitefish one uh you have to <laughs> do a, a drawing that shows the parking and and all the buildings there's just all kinds of requirements that you have to go through for all these different towns, the a lot of them, you know, most of them or all of them, I should say, requires the fire marshal to come out and inspect the place. They charge you another fifty-five dollars if the fire marshal has to come back if something's wrong. So all of these towns have their different requirements, but all of the requirements are pretty similar. Just a lot of inspections and a lot of people from the city have to come in and check everything and this Flathead County this one's interesting because a lot of people think oh I can just go out outside of town and do this easy because there's no requirements out there well that's not true even in county uh, actually this form is more in-depth than all the other ones you have to fill in all these different uh, 
lines here, the parking, the traffic circulation, how much open space, the landscaping, sewer, water, fire. It's just, they, they make you jump through all kinds of, all kinds of hoops to be able to do these short-term rentals. And then the last one here is just Kalispell. Kalispell is similar to the other towns where, you know, you just have to get the different uh, people in there to inspect it. There's a fee to apply. So anyway, what I'm saying is there's a lot that goes into these things nowadays. It's not like it used to be where you could just, you know, when Airbnb and VRBO are the new thing, all the cities have caught on. And there's definitely things you have to do now in order to make these legal. And the last thing you need to keep in mind is the actually managing the property. There are tons of companies around here that will do it for you, but that comes with a cost. And you need to do your homework on what exactly they're going to do and what exactly it's going to cost you. Some of the companies charge upwards of 40% of your income to do everything. And obviously it depends on how many services they provide and what they're actually doing for you will determine the cost. But 40% is, is a lot, especially if you're not renting it out all that often. So make sure you do your homework on those management companies and check into all of them and pick the right one that will work for you like I said, some of them will do, they'll put the ads out for you on Airbnb or their own websites and they'll set up the cleaning, they'll do, they'll do it all. So basically you just collect a check at the end of every month if, if it's being rented out. Uh, but that check is going to be considerably smaller than if you would do it on your own. These rentals are, they can be quite profitable if you do them properly, but there's a lot that goes into them. And if you are going to do it all on your own, it's a ton of work. We have some friends that have one and it seems like all summer long, they can't go out on, you know, Friday morning or Sunday morning, whatever it is, because they're cleaning out from the last tenant and they got to get it ready for the next people that are moving in later that day. So uh, get ready for a lot of work. It's not as easy as everyone makes it out to be. But if you do do your homework, they can be very profitable. So keep these things in mind while you're looking and let us know if we can help you find a short term rental property here in Montana. Thank you for watching our video. Please call, text, or email for more information. And don't forget to watch our other videos about Montana.